Okay, bonding. Everything has to do with bonding. Okay, last unit, we talked about two important trends. One was called uh, free. One was called uh, ionization energy. So ionization energy is the energy to do what? Take an electron away from the atom. Okay. Electron affinity had to do with an atom willing to bring in an electron. Okay. So if they give up an electron, what charge do they become? Yes? Positive. Okay. So that's going to be real important in this chapter here. It's going to be positive. Okay. Um, if it accepts an electron, willing to accept an electron... Okay, um, Zach, if it's accepting an electron and it does accept an electron, what's its charge going to be? Yeah, okay, and that's an anode. So we're going to be talking about things that involve uh, ions. And that's going to be important in determining what type of bond it forms, okay? Now, there are some of these atoms, they both want electrons. Okay, so what, what group, if they get together, they both will want that electron. They won't be willing to give it up. So they, comp they have to compromise. So what group on the periodic table does not want to give up their electrons, actually want to bring in electrons? What group? The non-metal. The nonmetals don't want to give up electrons. And so if they pair up, they share. They call it's called sharing. If you get an element that wants to give up electron, like a metal, and pair it with a nonmetal that wants an electron, what we do, what we have there is one will give it up, become positive charge, which is metals, a like cation. And then you'll have the other element accept that electron or electrons, multiple electrons and become an anion. And so they're opposite charged, right? What do we know about opposite charged particles? They attract. They, attract. they come together. Okay? They're going to come together. <clears throat> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a series of notes up here. I'd like you to copy down. Um, you were asked to put terms down. I don't know if you did reading or anything associated with that. But... There's actually three types of bonds. There's ionic, okay, there's covalent, and there's metallic. Metallic is the, is we'll spend not even a half a day on metallic. We know metallic properties already, right? What are some properties of something that has metallic bonding? What are some properties that exist in elements that have... Um, Metallic bonding. Yes? They conduct electricity. What else? Yeah? Are they non malleable? They're, they're actually, they're, they're opposite. They'll be malleable. You can bend them and they don't break. Okay? So they're malleable. They, they, uh, they're ductile, they can be drawn into wire, for example. Okay, they stay together really well. And they can be molded and shaped. Okay. That is the last one. That is the, uh, a minor type of bonding. We're going to be talking mostly about covalent in this chapter. Covalent is the most emphasized um, character that we're going to look at in this chapter, which is basically just nonmetals bonded together. And that's what we're going to spend. There's a whole chemistry associated with carbon, which is a nonmetal. It's called organic chemistry. And it's strictly just covalent molecules that deal with carbon. Because carbon probably makes up over 90% of all the molecules that we would have. Okay? So um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through this real quick. If you guys got questions, if you guys have these definitions, if you don't want to write the definition down again, that's fine. Um, since you have the definition, this is going to be a little bit more vague, but I'm going to describe a little bit more information about um, ionic bond and what that is. Okay? 
So it's electrical attraction between anions and cations, right? So ionic bond is electrical attraction between cations and anions. You got that definition down. So an anion, what's an anion? Negatively charged, okay? It's a negative. And uh, what element, or what group of elements are anions formed from? Kennedy, what kind of, what group of elements do, where, where do we find anions form from? What group of elements? Okay. Alexis? What group? Non-metals. Okay. So these will gain electrons. Those non-metals will gain electrons. Okay. And then if we pair them up with a cation, which is positive, that group is, Joe, what's that group, cations? Metals. Metals. If we have a combination of metals and non-metals, that usually determines if it's ionic. Now, there's another way that's more precise than that, but if you see uh, ionic compounds are usually metal, non-metal combination. Okay, so most of the time if you can look at it and go, oh, I've got calcium and I've got chlorine, that's ionic bond. So most of the time you can tell an ionic bond by that method. Any questions? So it's pretty easy. One's wanting to give it up because it has a low ionization energy like metals and non-metals have a high electron affinity and they want to accept an electron and so they'll accept that electron and they become opposite opposites attract and they form a compound so I'm going to show you an example of that with electron configuration so we want to tie that in like what's that electron configuration we spend all that time working with and talking about so I've got an example. Here's fluorine, which is a non-metal. It has an electron configuration. It's supposed to be helium. Of 2s2, 2p5. <coughs> We've got lithium. It has a configuration of helium. And, and I'm going to do this kind of reverse. I'm going to put this up here. I'm going to put down below here one, uh, 2s1. <coughs> Fluorine really wants it, that it needs one electron to get to be a full <coughs> outer shell. Okay? Lithium would need a bunch more to get a full outer shell if it would go that way. So what will happen is this electron here will come up to here and be given up by lithium. So now this becomes 2p6. Okay, and so what's the charge of it? Minus now. It's gaining an extra electron. This one has lost its electron and becomes positive. What kind of configuration do both of these have that's similar? What, what group are these both these associated with now? Noble gases. Noble gases. Now, they, they're, now they're noble gases. Really, I mean, when you take a look at them, this one's like helium, and then this one's like neon. <coughs> so they're not like noble gases. They are opposite charge. Those opposite charge particles will want to come together. So fluorine, I'll go ahead and show the model. Fluorine would be negative. And lithium will be positive and they'll come together. And that's what creates the glue that sticks them together. 
And where you have one fluorine, you have lots of fluorines. So what they do is they form a crystal structure, or lattice structure we'll call later on, of all of these ions doing this where lithiums will surround all the fluorines and then fluorines will start to surround the lithium and so we just get an alter, uh, alter, uh, altering of the plus minus charges and they just kind of all will be around the other ones okay as we go I can keep filling those in more and more and more if I wanted to but they, they, there's a bunch of them and they'll stick together in what we call a lattice structure. Okay. Later on, we'll, we'll look at that term. <clears throat> Any questions with that? That's a real <coughs> example of electron configuration, kind of showing that, and then we can also model that with the circles and represent charges and show them how they kind of attach together. Okay. Any questions with that? So now we get to covalent <coughs> bonding. Uh, and over 90% of, probably 95% or above, of all compounds are covalent. So if you go to school or you do anything with chemistry related, you're going to take most of the classes are going to be related to covalent bonding because that's over 95% of what we have, okay? So that definition is a bond formed between two atoms by sharing pairs of electrons. So now we have sharing of electrons that will take place, okay? And you have that definition down, so I'm not going to rewrite that for you and have you write that down, okay? Usually determine when both elements are nonmetals. So they'll just be nonmetals hooked together. Fluorine and chlorine. Nitrogen and chlorine. Okay? It wouldn't be nitrogen and lithium, though. Those are metal nonmetals. So we, we're not going to show sharing take place. So most of the chapter has to deal with sharing. Now, sometimes this sharing is equal, and some of most times it's unequal. They don't share <coughs> electrons equally. Okay? So in your book. <clears throat> Go ahead and get that out. You need to turn to that chart that has electronegativities on it. Electronegativities. And this is a chart you're going to use in which to determine types of bonding in the future. That'll be the last thing we'll cover today. Now, we'll have a lab, I think, on Wednesday. Even though Wednesday's a shortened period, I think we'll do the lab on Wednesday. Come in right away. <coughs> and we'll get that done. And this chapter is a long chapter. And usually the last section we separate from the whole, the whole chapter. We'll see how things can go. But the page number of electronegativities is page 161. Page 161. Okay, we'll use that here in a second. So just like I gave you an example of ionic bonding with what we call um, electron configuration, we're going to do the same with this one. And we're going to take an easy one. We're going to take hydrogen, which is 1s1. And then we're going to look at chlorine.
Hydrogen does not want to give up its electron. It's a non-metal. Even though it's in the metal area, where it's a non-metal in characteristics when it doesn't want to give up its electron. Chlorine doesn't want to give up any electrons, so they compromise and they say, what we'll do is I need hydrogen, I need an electron, chlorine, I need an electron, we're going to share that electron. And so what it does is it comes over and it shares in this location. Now hydrogen becomes like 1s2. So there's hydrogen right here. And so now it's like it has two electrons in it. Even though that one of those electrons is not um, hydrogen. Now chlorine now has how many electrons in its outer shell? It has eight. We call that octet rule. Anything that has eight electrons or a full outer shell. Now, hydrogen doesn't have eight. It'll never have eight. But it has a full outer shell, and it won't be an octet. But everything else is going to be considered an octet when they form bonds. So that's called a single bond because they're sharing one pair of electrons. And, everybody, and both of them have a full outer shell. So that's called sharing that will take place. If, you, if we go back to here, both of them have a full outer shell. Fluorine, because it took away from lithium, and lithium is like helium now because now it has the 1s2. Okay? And it's full. So everything tends when it bonds to either do one way or the other, ionic or, or covalent. So the last thing I'm going to share with you is how do you determine exactly maybe how ionic it is in character or if it's, you know, slightly covalent in character. Uh, covalent character means it's pure covalent, which means there's an equal share. Equal, 50-50, an equal share. And that's called a pure covalent bond. Purely 100% covalent. There's an equal share. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you uh, the three types of bonding that we could have. Two of them are covalent. One's called a nonpolar covalent bond. We have a polar covalent. I think you have these definitions down. So I'm not going to give you the definition. And then we have ionic. Nonpolar covalent, the difference in electronegativity is between 0 and 5%. So difference, I'm going to shorten this up. In electronegativity, I've got to shorten up too. So you just have to remember. Electroneg. If you want to write the whole thing out, you can. That's on that chart. Is between 0% to 5% when you look at the bonded atoms. We're going to give you an example of that. <clears throat> in numbers, that would be 0 to 0.3 difference in electronegativity. Okay, We'll give an example of that so you can see it. Polar covalent means there's a bigger difference in the sharing. So they're sharing, but they're not sharing equally. And so it's called an unequal share. That's between 5% to 50 percent. Okay, the difference is going to be 0.3 to 1.7 in difference. So if it falls in that range, 0.3 to 1.7 difference in electronegativity, then we'll say it's polar covalent. And ionic is 50 percent or higher, so greater than 50 percent. So that's uh, greater than 1.7 difference. So example, CL and BR. You guys find CL and BR? 
CL is what electronegativity we have for CL? Three. Three. BR? 2.8. The difference is 0.2. So it falls in the range. We call that nonpolar covalent. Po polar covalent. Fluorine and sulfur. Now if you notice, these are all nonmetals. So it goes back, what is the type of covalent bond? Nonmetals. Sharing. Okay. So fluorine is 4 and sulfur is 2.5. Okay. So the difference is 1.5, right? So that falls in that range. It's going to be considered polar covalent. And then ionic is anything greater than 1.5 or 1.7. So that would be like CA and O. And then I'm running out of room here, but I'll write down CA is 1. If you notice, metals have low electronegativities. They don't want the electron. Okay? And then oxygen is 3.5. So the difference is 2.5. That's ionic. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you an assignment, and this assignment's due on Wednesday. <coughs> okay? It's due on Wednesday, not tomorrow. If you have your lab to kind of finish up, I want that handed in tomorrow. Give you a little extra time to think about that. Your assignment is one through eight, page two oh nine. You should be able to do uh, all those questions, and some of them are related to your terms, and some are related to doing the ionic difference, ionic, polar covalent, non-polar covalent. Okay, and that's due on Wednesday before we do our lab. Okay? Get that down. Uh, Please come in. If you've got questions you want to do better on the retake, don't just rely on just doing the review without coming in and maybe have some questions that you need to get answered. Okay? If you're willing to do that and spend some time doing that, you will, you will get better. If you just rely on the review, I don't know. You'll we'll get that much better. Um, here's my terms. And then also, I need one of those lab numbers. Is you gone? Yeah, I think so. Which, uh, they got that on Friday. So was you here Friday? Yeah, I was here Friday, but I don't. You don't have this one? No, the, what, this one, I think. I don't know. You might have to look for that, because I, I don't, I can yeah, look. One. Why don't you look? You can't find it. No, I think I have one. No, I have this one. So, so you when didn't did do the lab when we did the lab. Did yeah, you hear me do the lab? Oh, I must not have been because I was gone for that week. Okay. We'll get you. We'll need to And then I have that. Okay. Um, we, oh, they're, they're back there. Do you want to go back there and see if you can find a copy? Okay. Because that's where they came in and redo the lab. That was a day that... Yeah, you might have been gone, yeah. I have a question on the 